Hello and welcome to today's Melani Minute. Uh, today we're continuing looking at different hymns and today we're going to be looking at a hymn that was uh, in the past uh, few years rated as the number two most popular hymn of all time and on Friday we're going to look at the number one most popular hymn of all time but today we're going to be looking at How Great Thou Art um, and from anyone that watched Monday's video knows this week we're going to be looking at a series of hymns, uh, some of the, just a brief little history, and then looking at the theology and the significance of what we sing when we sing these different uh, traditional songs. Uh, with How Great Thou Art, one of the interesting things with its history, it's, it's a Swedish hymn, or be, at least based on a Swedish tune. Uh, it went to various countries and was popular in various countries but it never really took root in English-speaking countries uh, because of some of its different history. But eventually it made its way and was made popular because of George Beverly Shea, who was Billy Graham's uh, music guy, if you will. Um, and it, it has a very interesting history. I suggest you look, at, uh, it look a little bit more into it. Maybe I can make another video on that uh, sometime in the future. But I want to dig into some of the, the power of this. But this hymn was so popular that it wasn't put in hymnals because of some of that history. Um, but it became so popular that churches would print it out and paste it on the front cover, uh, on the, the inside of the front cover of the hymnal. So if you ever find a hymnal with that, that's why it was essentially added to it because it was so popular. Uh, but this is a powerful hymn uh, based on... Uh, a poem, like pretty much all hymns are, or at least all older hymns, any hymn that's more than a hundred years old was almost guaranteed to be uh, a poem first with uh, that was added to music later. But this one shows a, a narrative. A lot of hymns will do that. They either show some kind of theological idea or a theological narrative. And this one starts with the personal uh, subject, which when we're singing is us meditating on God's greatness. Uh, when uh, oh God, uh, oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder, just uh, awesome, not in the the lower version that we often use it today, but in this amazing great thing. When I wonder and consider all the works that hands have made, it's starting at creation and what God has done in creation. With the, I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. And it continues with that. When I uh, went through the woods and forest glades, I wander, I hear the birds sing sleepily in the trees. Continuing in this idea of creation. But then we get to the third verse and it shifts from creation which has fallen to Christ. And, but when I think that God, his son not sparing, sent him to die. I scarce can take it in. We think about the greatness and power of God, and yet he sent his son to die for us. It shifts from an awesome consideration to something that we can't even imagine. Uh, that on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, that he took our sin. He bled and died to take away my sin. And that final... Uh, verse of when Christ shall come with shout of acclamation just with shouts of joy and proclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow in humble adoration and then proclaim my God how great thou art how amazing is that idea anytime I sing this and in different settings it just it, it it brings a level of realization to that that I think is difficult for us day to day to realize that eventual reality of Christ's return. So this hymn starts with creation and meditating on creation and then shifts to Christ's first coming and ends with Christ's second coming. Of course, each time with the refrain then sings my soul, my Savior, God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. And so it it focuses on these things and then our response. Then sings my soul how great thou art. Uh, this this hymn just it, it encapsulates so much amazing truth for us. And we find this 
uh, in various places throughout the scripture. A large part of it is actually based on Psalm uh, 121. I lift my eyes to the hills from where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Uh, he will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, the moon nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep you in life. The Lord will keep you. Uh, your going out and your coming in from this time forth evermore. And it's just an amazing thing of the Lord has made all of this and he will protect you in it. And of course, verse 3 and 4 shift to focus more on New Testament idea with with the actualization of Christ uh, in verse 3. Uh, but when I think that God, my son, uh, that God, his son, not sparing, excuse me, shifts to Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, which is the cloud of witnesses that, that have seen what has happened and that we are encouraged by. And then it shifts to 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17, which is talking about uh, the, the uh, end times and the uh, completion of Christ's return. And this is just such an amazing hymn, something to meditate, not just on the greatness of God in terms of his creation, but also his sending his son to die and the eventual return of the son when Christ shall come with shout of acclamation. Uh, in the past, when I would play uh, trumpet in churches or, or in different settings, and we would do How Great Thou Art, the, the trumpets would often play in the first verse and, and maybe in the second, but we would almost never play in the third. It would, everything would drop down and be calm. But then we would come back in with that fourth, with that shout of acclamation and emphasize that return of Christ and what that will mean for us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you that we're able to come together to meditate on your word and meditate on what others have written about your word and in different forms. And as we look at these different hymns and the, the amazing truth that they hold, I just pray that you help us to see the truth that these men saw from your word, that these things reflect your truth from your scriptures. And I just pray that they uh, encourage and edify us as we're told in uh, various places in scriptures that we're to sing songs, hymns, and spiritual songs to encourage and edify and correct one another. And uh, <clears throat> I just pray today that we are able to do that, that as we sing music of various sorts, as we read the Psalms, as we sing the Psalms, as we sing just everything uh, that we do, that we can remember that your word is truth. And that you are the source of this truth. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me today.